everybody, it's Miss Karen from the Hancock Town Library with another First Chapter Friday. And um, this is an animal story, but it's much more than that. It's a, um, Pax is the title, and it's by Sarah Pennypacker. I just happen to love that last name, Pennypacker. Um, it's a wonderful story. Um, well, you'll find out. I'll just read the first chapter, but it's about a boy and his pet fox. Here we go, and it's read with permission by Harper Collins. Chapter one. The fox felt the cow slow before the boy did, as he felt everything first. Through the pads of his paws, along his spine, in the sensitive whiskers at his wrists, by the vibrations, he learned also that the road had grown coarser. He stretched up from his boy's lap and sniffed at threads of scent leaking in through the window which told him they were now traveling in, into the woodlands. The sharp odors of pine, wood, bark, cones, and needles slivered through the air like blades, but beneath that, the fox recognized softer clover and wild garlic and ferns, and also a hundred things he had never encountered before, but that smelled green and urgent. The boy sensed something now, too. He pulled his pet back to him, and gripped his baseball glove more tightly. The boy's anxiety surprised the fox. The few times they had traveled in the car before, the boy had been calm or even excited. The fox nudged his muzzle into the glove's webbing, although he hated the leather smell. His boy always laughed when he did this. He would close the glove around his pet's head, play wrestling, and in this way the fox would distract him. But today, the boy lifted his pet and buried his face in the fox's white ruff, pressing hard. It was then that the fox realized his boy was crying. He twisted around to study his face to be sure. Yes, crying, although without a sound, something the fox had never known him to do. The boy hadn't shed tears for a very long time, but the fox remembered always before he had cried out, as if to demand that attention be paid to the curious occurrence of salty water streaming from his eyes. The fox licked at the tears and then grew more confused. There was no scent of blood. He squirmed out of the boy's arms to inspect his human more carefully, alarmed that he could have failed to notice an injury, although his sense of smell was never wrong. No, no blood, not even the underskin pooling of a bruise or the marrow leak of a cracked bone, which had happened once. The car pulled to the right, and the suitcase beside them shifted. By its scent, the fox knew it held the boy's clothing and the things from his room he handled most often. The photo he kept on top of his bureau and the items he hid in the bottom drawer. He pawed at a corner, hoping to pry the suitcase open enough for the boy's weak nose to smell those favored things and be comforted. But just then, the car slowed again, this time to a rumbling crawl. The boy slumped forward, his head in his hands. The fox's heartbeat climbed, and the brushy hairs of his tail lifted. The charred metal scent of the father's new clothing was burning his throat. He leaped to the window and scratched at it. Sometimes at home, his boy would raise a similar glass wall if he did this. He always felt better when the glass wall was lifted. Instead, the boy pulled him down onto his lap again and spoke to his father in a begging tone. The fox had learned the meaning of many human words, and he heard him use one of them now. No. Often the no word was linked to one of the two names he knew, his own and his boy's. He listened carefully, but today it was just a no pleaded to the father over and over. The car jutted to a full stop and tilted off to the right, a cloud of dust rising beyond the window. The father reached over the seat again and after saying something to his son in a soft voice that didn't match his hard lie scent, he grasped the fox by the scruff of the neck. His boy did not resist, so the fox did not resist. He hung limp and vulnerable in the man's grasp, although he was now frightened enough to nip. He would not displease his humans today. The father opened the car door and strode over gravel and patchy weeds to the edge of a wood. The boy got out and followed. The father set the fox down, and the fox bounded out of his reach. He locked his gaze on his two humans. Surprised to notice that they were nearly the same height now, 
The boy had grown very tall recently. The father pointed to the woods. The boy looked at his father for a long moment, his eyes streaming again. And then he dried his face with the neck of his t-shirt and nodded. He reached into his jeans pocket and withdrew an old plastic soldier, the fox's favorite toy. The fox came to alert, ready for the familiar game. His boy would throw the toy and he would track it down, a feat the boy always seemed to find remarkable. He would retrieve the toy and wait with it in his mouth until the boy found him and took it back to toss again. And sure enough, the boy held the toy soldier aloft and then hurled it into the woods. The fox's relief, they were only here to play the game, made him careless. He streaked toward the woods without looking back at his humans. If he had, he would have seen the boy wrench away from his father and cross his arms over his face, and he would have returned. Whatever his boy needed, protection, distraction, affection, he would have offered. Instead, he set off after the toy, finding it was slightly more difficult than usual, as there were so many other fresher odors in the woods, but only slightly. After all, the scent of the boy was also on the toy, that scent he could find anywhere. The toy soldier lay face down at the buried root of a butternut tree, as if he had pitched himself there in despair. His rifle, its butt pressed tirelessly against his face, was buried to the hilt in leaf litter. The fox nudged the toy free, took it between his teeth, and rose on his haunches to allow his boy to find him. In the still woods, the only movements were bars of sunlight glinting like green glass through the leafy canopy. He stretched higher. It was no sign of his boy. A prickle of worry shivered up the fox's spine. He dropped the toy and barked. There was no response. He barked again and again and was answered by only silence. If this was a new game, he did not like it. He picked up the toy soldier and began to retrace his trail. As he loped out of the woods, a jay streaked in above him, shrieking. The fox froze, torn. His boy was waiting to play the game. But birds? Hours upon hours, he had watched birds from his pen, quivering at the sight of them, slicing the sky as recklessly as the lightning he often saw on summer evenings. The freedom of their flights always mesmerized him. The jay called again, deeper in the forest now, but answered by a chorus of reply. For one more moment, the fox hesitated, peering into the trees for another sight of the electric blue wedge. And then behind him, he heard a car door slam shut, and then another. He bounded at full speed, heedless of the briars that tore at his cheeks. The car's engine roared to life, and the fox skidded to a stop at the edge of the road. His boy rolled the window down and reached his arms out, and as the car sped away in a pelting spray of gravel, the father cried out the boy's name, Peter, and the boy cried out the only other name the fox knew, Pax. That's chapter one. I hope you uh, get to read this book, the entire book, because it's a wonderful book, and I will be here next week to read you another trust chapter. Have a great week.